Good morning. So, I'm Bruce Freeman. I'm the rector of this church, the parish of St. Matthew. Um, and this is Low Sunday in the Anglican Episcopal Communion, which generally means low attendance, low energy, lots of low. Um, but today, as almost every single year, this is not Low Energy Sunday because we are having a baptism. Annika is happy, at least at this moment, and with Grandma, and we are gonna have baptism today and Eucharist. I wanna welcome you, I wanna welcome those of you who are on our YouTube streaming. It's good to have you with us on this beautiful day. For those of you who are in other parts of the country that are colder, the wisteria are out here. Um, <clears throat> that is not to taunt you in any way, but just to tell you why our, um, uh, how to say it, our attitudes are very positive today. Um, <clears throat> the service this morning uh, begins with an opening hymn, which is in your red hymnal, hymn number 492, 492. <clears throat> Continuing in your bulletin with the acclamation. Blessed be the one holy and living God. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With, the, with great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of Lord Jesus, and great grace came upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each, and had as any had need. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from the Acts of uh, that's another one. Uh, please join me in responsive reading of Psalm 133, which you can find in today's bulletin. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. Upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, 
Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. May we see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. And it is an absolutely glorious past few days that we have been having. And I want to wish you all again a happiest Easter. And for some of you, you might be wondering, well, haven't we already celebrated Easter last Sunday? Which is true, we did do that. We did ring our big hallelujahs, we got the vigil at the Sunday services. But the good news and the fun news is that actually that was just the start of our 50 days of celebrating. And that's the biggest party in the church calendar year because resurrection has happened. And so you're going to be seeing us here draped with the whites and the flowers, which are beautiful, by the way. And it leads on up to Pentecost this May. That's when the Holy Spirit will come into place. But for right now, we have the biggest party to celebrate the resurrection. So I like to think of this season of Easter in which the disciples and us are processing what happened. We process that somehow our human God, the beloved teacher, Jesus, has somehow destroyed death. And Easter is the season of jubilation and its preparation on how to be the church. For if you think about it, this season, I kind of like to think about it as the image of the kid who's using the bicycle with the training wheels on it that have been attached, but they're already riding it just fine. So this is kind of when Jesus is coming along in today's reading to say, hey, you're going to be okay. Let's take off the training wheels and let's begin the church. So with that, with it being celebratory, personally, it's also been really nice to be celebratory because it was a little tricky during Holy Week to have opening day for baseball on Monday, Thursday. <laughs> so there I was on Thursday going like, Jesus is preparing to die. It's baseball. Like, Jesus is getting betrayed right now. It's the most wonderful time of the year. So kind of going back and forth on that Thursday. So admittedly, I'm really happy that we get to celebrate both Easter and baseball now. 
And usually what happens during this time, about the month before the season, and it lingers a month afterwards, I find myself watching my favorite baseball movies here and there. And so, of course, Field of Dreams, like Bull Durham, my personal favorite, having been a pitcher, her love of the game, and of course, my childhood classic, The Sandlot. And so recently, there I was, watching The Sandlot, and there's Benny at the helm of the neighborhood kids in the San Fernando Valley. Squint is in love with the lifeguard. Ham is usually bashing on someone, pointing to the wall. And the elusive beast is behind the fence. And so this microcosm of a summer of 1962, there had one interaction in this movie. It's kind of a glimpse to me of what Easter is about. And what for the disciples, especially as Thomas as we see today, being reminded of what to do now that Jesus has resurrected and is present. So we all meet the new neighborhood kid, Smalls, and he's never played baseball aside from one poorly attempted round of catch that resulted in that black eye that you see. So he's understandably shy and nervous and intimidated about his weakness and not knowing how to play baseball and not knowing how to throw the baseball. But then you see this moment, you see Benny, and he runs to left field, and he's talking to Smalls, and at the end of it, he just says, when Smalls is asking, well, what do I do to catch the ball? Benny turns to him, and he says, just stand there and stick out your glove in the air. I'll take care of it. To me, that is the subtle moment of seeing what Easter is about when Benny says, I'll take care of it. When we celebrate, because resurrection has happened, we here as a group of humans are trying to figure out how we share the news amid the, all the emotions of loss and redemption, confusion, woohoo, or these doubters and these seekers wanting answers. And I will say to my grave, Thomas in today's gospel was not doubting Thomas, but rather human Thomas. He was trying to just understand how he gets to behave because Jesus is saying this Easter, I'll take care of it. God has shown up and he will show up no matter what. But we first have to put our trust in ourselves to be the love in the world. We first have to put our gloves out, our hearts out, our will to do God's love out in order for God to show up. And so by trusting and reaching out, we are taking the first steps on how to be the church, how to will the church beyond just our gathering today. I love it. I really appreciate it when our collection of readings kind of helps us get into that motion. And so in the call out, we are reminded a new covenant has happened. A new covenant is here. We are people of resurrection, people of a new covenant of peace and love, as we heard in the call out. And then we moved into the reading. We leaned into a community of common focus as seen in Acts. We received the blessing of living in unison together in the psalm. We see that fellowship and declaring what is good is heard in the first letter of John. And we share peace followed by the support of Jesus saying, I'll take care of it. Each of these readings point back to the truth that it is because we get to lean into the truth that God will take care of it because he has conquered the grave and God will show up as long as we trust and live and love. For Thomas shows us that doubt and wanting to see is human. He too wanted to put his glove out. He just needed to be reminded to do that. I mean, if you think about it, self-driving cars. If you heard about self-driving cars, did you have doubts about it? Who here had doubts about it, right? <laughs> it's beyond human understanding. So, of course, it's beyond human understanding that you've already found out that Jesus has somehow conquered death, and yet Jesus was just here, too. Of course you're going to doubt. Or maybe instead of doubt, let's say, ask questions. Ask clarifying questions, as I used to tell my students. Like, ask clarifying questions. So why is that important, and what does this mean, then? 
is that our putting out the glove that Thomas is reminding us that we sometimes will struggle to do is the power of willing God into the world. And simply to put it, our putting out our glove is the very core of our baptismal covenant. So what do I mean by that? If you think about it, there's power in the word will. W-I-L-L. There are multiple times that we will hear it and say the word will in our liturgy. Whenever we say the Nicene Creed, we say, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. During the breaking of the bread, a time you're invited to say, or kind of stick out your glove and say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. When we say the Lord's Prayer together, we ask that thy will be done. And today, my friends, especially, we will see all of us reaching out our gloves of trust to experience God in that during the baptism of little Annika Elizabeth, we are going to say, I will, we will, we will with God's help, multiple times reaching out. And all we have to do in order to be faithful to God's call for us is to show up, and when we say congrats, all has been done, we have reached out the beautiful word of what the extraordinary author, Kate Bowler, as you all know, I love her, in her Sunday Easter bulletin, she wrote, Blessed are we who reach out our hands to you in doubt and grief, in sickness of body and mind and spirit, our prayers not fully realized, rejoicing anyway. But that is what makes us Easter people, carrying forth the realized hope of the resurrected one, singing our alleluias, great and small, while it is still dark. Couldn't say it any better. Singing our alleluias, great and small, while it is still dark. That no matter where we are in our lives, my friends, we especially get to remember today, in light of the Sandlot Benny's assurance, just stick up, just stand there, stick your glove in the air, I'll take care of it. Because this Easter is our reminder that God, we get to step out with our hearts and we say we will with God's help because Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ has said I'll take care of it, and Christ will come again. And to that we will say Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. All right, let's baptize a wee one, a little one, Annika Elizabeth. I invite the parents and the godparents to join me in your bulletin as you will present Annika together. And now, with a whole lot of wills in it, I'm going to ask this of the parents and godparents. Will you be responsible that the child that you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? In going forward here, these are the ancient, ancient vows Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? 
Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? All right, congregation, as we all know, I invite you to stand. Annika is joining a broader family today, the body of Christ for sure, but we are the visible witnesses of that body, and we are going to say something like, we will. (laughs) Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in her life in Christ? And now let us join with this person who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, Pastor. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, Pastor. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, Pastor. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, Pastor. Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God be with you. you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection, death and resurrection from the bond, excuse me, in it we are buried with Christ in his death, by it we share in his resurrection, through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit, therefore in joyful obedience to your son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, sanctify this water, we pray you by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
All right. Now remember, we have to work on our sight lines here. We have to make sure that Helen can see you and see the baptism. Sorry, Jim and Susan, you're not worried. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Okay, name your daughter, please. Annika Elizabeth. Annika Elizabeth. Oh my goodness, you're going to wake up, you angel. <laughs> Annika Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I get to do that because I'm the priest. <laughs> okay, pass her to her God. Passing her to her Godmother, who will hold her up so that everyone can see her. All right, Annika, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Now, congregation, please join me as we say let us pray yes. heavenly father we thank you that by water and the holy spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace sustain her O lord in your holy spirit give her an inquiring and discerning heart the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Okay, let's move to this side. Come a little bit forward. I, I've got to say, the older brothers are being amazing. <laughs> And now, let us welcome the newly baptized by saying together, we receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Let us welcome our new sister in Christ by a parade. Okay, we're going that way. At this time of celebration, we say to you, The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> you may greet one another.
please be seated. <laughs> All right. Well, um, on behalf of the family, uh, or on behalf of the parish family, I want to thank Annika's extended family with a whole bunch of Episcopalians, Methodists, and Catholics, all of whom knew what they were doing. It was awesome. It was awesome. Thank you so much to Andrew and Stephanie for presenting Annika for baptism today. Um, so this is uh, kind of an interesting time as we move through the Easter season. The next two Sundays, and I'm just going to be repetitive here, you will listen to me. The next two Sundays, um, we are having only one service at 10 a.m. The next two Sundays, only one service in here at 10 a.m. The reason for that is that next week, we will uh, be hosting choir members from the first AME church um, in Los Angeles uh, for the Spirituals Project, which is a special service to celebrate the legacy of African-American music that became many of our favorite hymns. We'll be led through the unique history of the music during the service, so we really want you to bring your children, we want you to bring your friends. Um, a professor, and I am forgetting her name this moment, Dwayne from UCLA is coming to help us walk through the whole corpus. Diane Dwight Clayton. Diane Dwight Clayton, yes. And, um, and members of the uh, FA ME fame uh, choir will be here with us next week. And um, it is really, uh, I hope, and I think many of us hope, the beginning of a, a long relationship with uh, fame as we um, talk about the, the, uh, the legacy of African American spirituals and our responsibility um, in lifting that, them up and um, partnering with fame and African American congregations in that music. Um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to also, in, in, in connection with that, um, the longtime pastor of fame, Cecil Chip Murray, uh, passed away, I believe, yesterday, Dan? I think it was yesterday. And um, so we will, uh, although we don't have the normal prayers here, um, we, we do have the normal prayers of the people up the hill at 1030. So we'll pray for Chip Murray um, and for the Congregation of Fame um, a little bit later today. Later next Sunday at 4 p.m., we're hosting a screening of the documentary, The Philadelphia 11, about the very first, about the first women to be ordained as Episcopal priests. Um, this is a really special event for us, and we hope you can make it. All are welcome, and you can RSVP. Uh, you can find an RSVP link on our website or in the weekly carillon. Where are we seeing it? In here? Right in here. Wonderful. Um, I always do a lot of um, really selfish name dropping when we talk about the Philadelphia 11, um, as does Helen, um, because I had three of the Philadelphia 11, original women priests in the Episcopal Church as professors during seminary. And Helen uh, knew them, of course, in Boston. Um, so um, just, they're incredible, an incredible story, and I invite you to come at four o'clock next Sunday. The week after that, um, and you know me, I'm gonna get a little reclamped. Um, there will be one service at what time? We're going to have a Boin Voyage service and reception for Christine Purcell on her last Sunday. Everyone is invited. Please, everyone's invited of all ages um, to come, and we're having this one service so that the entire community can be together. Um, we invite you to bring farewell notes to leave for Christine that day, and you can contribute to her purse through the link in the weekly carillon. Um, there will be a reception out on the patio afterwards where we can all sort of mob scene Christine. And um, so, and in the uh, transitions department, I, I do want to note that the fifth, fifth rector of St. Matthew's is here and the sixth rector. And I'm the sixth rector. So that makes Howard Anderson our fifth rector. And Howard is here from Minnesota. My reservation friend, um, and uh, 
It's so good to have you here, Howard. All right, are there any birthdays, anniversaries, or Thanksgivings this morning? Birthday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Wonderful. Anniversary. How many years? 30 years when? On the 29th. Oh, congratulations. 30 years. Wonderful. Yeah, David, you got way big credits. Let's clap for, <laughs> for both of them. Uh, all right. Let us pray. Oh, God, our times are in your hand. Be with these, your servants, as they begin another year of life, another year of marriage. Strengthen them. Give them joy. Give them hope. Give them patience. Give them most of all love and your love. Surround them with your peace, Lord, and be with them in this coming year. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. I invite the congregation to please stand and join me in the offertory sentence, offertory blessing. Blessed are you, God, all God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God. God be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator. God of hope, in your Holy Spirit you hovered over the face of the waters in creation, and in your pillar of fire you led your people to liberation across the Red Sea. Through the waters you brought your people into the life, into the life and land of promise. In your son's baptism at the Jordan, we see your creative and liberating purpose at work amid our human flaws and failures, and we hear anew with hope the promise of your voice. In our own baptism, you number us among your saints, created and redeemed for your glory. Through baptism, you bury us in death with Christ, yet raise us to new life for, with him forever. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels and archangels and all the company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessing God, you sent down your Holy Spirit like a dove upon your beloved. Send your spirit among us now to sanctify us by your grace. By the power of that same spirit, make these gifts of bread and wine be for us the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, who at the supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the re in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of glory, you have opened your heaven and come among us. Be close to those who ache for your liberating power in the midst of travails and seek your open heaven. Visit all who need the healing, forgiving, peacemaking, and restoring touch of your spirit and look for your kingdom to come. Bless all who long to be called beloved by sibling or parent or spouse or friend or child and any who are searching for the love that only you can bring until all stand in your presence and sing your name and are enfolded in your embrace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. This is Christ's banquet. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who feel you have failed, come because it is Christ who invites you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
I invite the congregation to please stand for the post-communion prayer. Let us pray together, saying, God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people on heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and for you in the, river, in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy, eternal majesty, holy, incarnate word, holy, abiding spirit, bless you forevermore. Amen. Amen. Forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We conclude our service by singing together hymn number 490, 490. 